Welcome to Italy. A gravel location filled with narrow turns, dangerous roads surrounded by cliffs and fast sectors. First is alignment. I always like to add some toe out to the front wheels to help with the cornering and some toe into the rear wheels to help with the car's stability and for faster corner drive outs. If you want to have better rotation mid corner, you can go for a negative value or toe out, but don't set it too high because it may induce understeer. For the camber, a higher value to the front wheels is always necessary, because the deformation of the tire is also influenced by the pivoting motion from left to right when steering, while on the rear wheels, since the surface grip on dirt and gravel stages is lower than on the asphalt stages, the deformation of the tire when cornering is smaller, thus requiring a smaller camber value. For the differentials, having the rear driving lock on high setting will help with the traction and corner drive outs. While on the front, a medium high lock value like this one will ensure understeering will not cause you any problems. The braking lock on the other hand should always be set a little bit lower than the driving lock. Otherwise, during heavy braking, you may experience too much wheel locking, and locking under braking means blowing out the corners. While a low value or no lock at all may fully lock the wheel with the least traction under heavy braking and induce a yaw moment on the car, destabilizing it. The preload ensures some additional lock under deceleration, so if you want to have some more stability from corner entry to mid corner, opt for a medium value on the rear wheels and a medium low on the front wheels. This way you are at the perfect balance between oversteer and understeer. On to the dampers, since here in Italy the tracks are narrow, there is not much room for cutting and only a few small jumps here and there, you can set the slow bump just a little bit on the softer side. This way you will not compromise the stability too much. The fast bump is set stiff enough to ensure the best shock absorption and combined with a medium ride height, you eliminate the possibility of hitting the bump stop when jumping. The bump division can be left at this medium value because as mentioned, there are no big jumps here. And again, since there are not many bumps and crests to lift the car many times throughout the stage, quick extension on the rebound is not that necessary, so just a bit on the softer side here allows for the best stability. On to the brakes, you can set the braking force at a medium high value without experiencing too much locking, and the brake bias more to the front wheels to allow for quick shifting of the car's center of mass from one tight corner to another, because this track is full of them. The handbrake force can also be set at a medium high value, because as mentioned above the road is narrow and dangerous, so you want to be able to rotate the car as quickly as possible before U-turns and the cute hairpins. Because Italy's terrain is full of surprises, from very steep climbs to tight corners and also a decent amount of straights, the gearbox was one tricky thing to set up. So the gears need to be set at a medium short ratio to be as quick as possible on those tight turns, a long fifth gear to allow for top speed on the straight segments, and finally a short final drive to promote acceleration. Now on the spring steps, since the track surface is not that dangerous, I kept the right height at a decent value. This way a lower center of mass is ensured, which leads to more stability. The spring rate is set on the softer side here, because we're on a gravel track, and I can say that these values ensure good rideability and control. And for the anti-roll bars, a stiffer setting will do the trick here, because combined with this ride height, you can minimize the body roll leading to faster and more controllable cornering. Making videos like this takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to be able to get the best settings for each featured car class. But at some point, I'm starting to feel limited by the capabilities of my old Logitech G29 steering wheel and its ability to mimic the force feedback required to feel each and every aspect of the track. Don't get me wrong, this is a great wheel and you can definitely be competitive with it, but to create the perfect tuning setup and also explain why and how I got those settings is the attention to details that matters most. Subscribing to my channel, liking and commenting on my videos and just being part of this amazing and growing community is a big support for me, but making a donation via the thanks button or becoming a member of this channel is an even greater one. This way I can satisfy my daily needs and invest in better gear so I can deliver more accurate tuning setups and better videos overall which you guys will benefit from. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track, bye bye!